Right, so an inverter is basically a device that changes DC into AC. And if you're doing home generation, of course, it's core to what you want to do because you want to save stuff in a battery and that battery, you want it to run your household bits and pieces, which are going to be 120 volts or 240 volts. Now, this isn't a problem just for us. This has been a problem for ages. So there are lots and lots of solutions out there to do it. Now, perhaps the simplest way is a way that was done right up until about the 1950s. And they still made this at the sort of the turn of the century. So in 1990, year 2000, they don't do it anymore. But that's how old that history is. And it's really, really simple. So let me give you a close up of what's needed. The first and most important thing you need is this. This is a vibrator. Now, the construction details on this are given in the video uh, how to make a speaker out of a microwave oven transformer, which goes through in detail how this is actually made. And you see what it is. It's a vibrating reed made from a hacksaw blade. You've got a coil here, and we've got some magnets there. These magnets actually take the place of a spring. What they used to do is use a normal spring. I've used magnets. And we've got a couple of contacts on the end there. And as that vibrates, it makes and breaks the contact. And that creates a pulsed DC. Now, when you feed a DC into a transformer, not very much will happen. But when you feed a pulsed DC into a transformer, it can step it up. So the other thing you need is a step-up transformer. And that one is just pulled from a microwave oven. Now, we're obviously not interested in frequency per se. We're not obviously not interested in the step-up itself at the moment. All we're interested in is how to get DC to pulse and then transform. And those are the two bits you need in order to be do that. So to get this thing to work is dead simple. The positive comes out of here to this side of the contact, that one there. Then we join the other side of the contact to the coil and the negative to the coil. So it's all in series. So the power comes out and is joined. It'll create a field in that coil, which will deflect that, turning off that field, go back and so on. And it will vibrate. So if we put some power in there. There we go. We've now got it vibrating. What's coming out of there is pulsed DC. Now we've only got two contact points here and here. But the DC pulse is the one that's going in there. Now this is at 12 volts, so obviously that's going to do nothing, and what we need to do now is step it up, and to do that we're going to use this thing. Now what we do is connect to the big thick coil, which is the primary coil, and we connect this to our 240 uh, volt piece of equipment, and we should get step up. We've connected the transformer, let's give it a bit of power. Ta-da! <laughs> our light is lighting. But you should notice this as well, that is arcing. So all I've done is replace the uh, homemade vibrator with a relay that's been wired as a vibrator and I've replaced the MOT transformer with a 12 volt to 240 volt transformer appropriate. Now if I give that some power so that this vibrates. Lo and behold, the lamp so here's a close up of the arrangement. There's the relay set as a vibrator, there's the power transformer, connection block, plug socket going to the lamp that we lit up, and it's that simple. So your relay looks like this. There are three contact points. There's a common, a normally open, and a normally closed. A normally closed in rest position has a switch connecting it. Now from your supply, you bring the negative to a coil. That coil is the electromagnetic relay that operates the switch. And then that same negative goes straight to one side of your transformer. Now the positive comes to the normally closed and then from the common to the positive side of your coil. So when you turn that on, the current can flow. That gets turned on. It pulls it to normally open and breaks it and then it will vibrate and you take the other side of this from the common to your transformer. That's how the relay is wired. Here you go, a really easy inverter to construct. Now you've got to remember this was the height of technology in the 40s and 50s and it has been superseded by semiconductors, but it has its advantages as well as its disadvantages. Some of the advantages clearly are, it's so easy to make. It's actually relatively cheap. This bit wears out, the rest of it doesn't. It does have disadvantages. I don't know if you noticed when we actually turned the power up to 12 volts and this got glowing, 
the frequency went down. So it's not frequency stable. So you're not going to run any sensitive electronics on it, but you are going to be able to run various loads on it. Of course, this thing arcs. Now, it arcs like crazy here because I didn't use the right gear. If you put a uh, high voltage capacitor across that output, it snubs the arc and helps extend the life of the electrodes. They have a spring in here and that spring wears out. The little flexible contact will break because it is mechanical, so eventually it will wear out. Now, they used to make these in cans, so you could just swap the can over. These days they don't make them, but these are very similar. They just actually, says heat, pull straight out, no tools required. So it's both got pluses and minuses. I thought I'd show it to you because if you fancy making an inverter, it really is the easiest one to make and get a good result out of. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.